Good evening and welcome to our 17th Healing of the Body class. Immediately let's lift into a or the living awareness that consciousness is I. Consciousness is the one, is God, is the infinitude, inseparable, indivisible. Therefore, consciousness is my body. It's the only I I am and have because I, because consciousness is inseparable, indivisible, one, not a multitude of different materials or matter or substance, amount, place, condition, but one, the one being, the one substance, the one I, existing in and as the one, the one place, the one condition, the one substance, the one consciousness, the one, therefore, body. And so we have, and we continue to, lift into, we're tapping into the truth that consciousness is what I am. Consciousness is body. I and body are not two different things or two different experiences or two different truths or two different aspects of truth. I is body because there is just one presence. Therefore, because I is the infinitude, God, consciousness, my body is the infinitude, God, consciousness. And by tapping into the infinite, tapping into consciousness as I, all-inclusive I, not I with, or let's say like this, not I, not infinite I, not omnipresent I with a local body, not spiritual I with a physical body, a local, finite, temporal body. You see how ridiculous that is now. I is I, period. And I is consciousness. I is the infinitude, God itself. Therefore, oneness the whole of itself present as the whole of itself at every point of awareness. Therefore, because God is the one, therefore God is the one body or the one embodiment of itself, the full, infinite, eternal embodiment of itself. Therefore, I am that. Therefore, my body is that and nothing else. All right, so by lifting into that awareness or tapping into that awareness... We're tapping into heaven. We're tapping into the mastery of the senses, the mastery of experience. And this is where we're now going in and along the adventure of living truth. And so let us make doubly or triply consistently sure that we understand that there is not a single local thing about us. There is a moment of awareness, or we could say, a local sense of awareness, which is really a momentary experience of awareness, but that does not make that momentary sense local or finite or temporal. How could it? The only substance there is, the only awareness there is, the only consciousness there is, and the only aspect of consciousness which the mind describes as a him or a her or an it or a condition or a place or an activity or an amount but it's wrong it is simply consciousness therefore the whole of consciousness existing as that which appears to be whatever it is we're naming and describing and having a concept about an idea about is because it is consciousness always the infinitude always omnipresence, always eternal, eternity itself, always God, therefore never finite, never local, never personal, 
And we have to be sure that we're realizing this, consciously realizing this, and not hearing our messages now as something pertaining to this local, physical, personal self and its world called my name or your name. We are speaking of our truth, and the only truth we are and have is the infinitude as us and every aspect of us, never, ever, even capable of being anything but the very infinitude, fully present at every point of our awareness and every aspect or every experience of our awareness, never capable of being anything but omnipresent, eternal, omniscient, omnipotent. Even this quick reminder sends us soaring into heaven, the peace of heaven, the freedom of heaven, the bliss, the completeness, the omnipresence of heaven, of paradise, of truth. Now, the problem the intellect has is that although the whole of experience, the whole of individual consciousness is actually the one self that we each are and spontaneously the one self that we each are. Omnipresence is the fullness of itself at every point of itself at the same time. We've had the example of an enclosed body of water, let's call it a cube of water. It doesn't matter what size it is. It can be a cubic inch or a cubic mile or a cubic million miles. It doesn't make any difference. When you apply a pressure point to any point of that enclosure, that pressure that seems to be happening at this point, we are applying it, is measurable as happening at every point in and throughout the body of water at the very same moment. And not only that, it is measured as happening at that point, or the cause of the pressure is measured as happening at that point, meaning at any point we care to measure. There we can detect the pressure point occurring. In other words, this is another way and a beautiful illustration of the fact that even in physics, omnipresence is spontaneously aware of whatever's happening in it or as it. And this is exactly what your being and the activity, the individual activity of your versus my being is as experience. Whatever it is you think, whatever concept you are carrying with you, whatever belief you live with, whatever idea you are convinced of, whatever you say, whatever you plan, whatever it is that is the ingredients of your being at this moment spontaneously exist as evidenced experience throughout and as your consciousness because all is literally one. We had a very beautiful and crystal clear description of this in the last chapter of the Way of Awakening book. In fact, let's read that right now, just to bring this awareness of literal oneness, literal omnipresence to the top of our mind so that the rest of our message can be truly heard and lived at an ever greater level of truthful living from this hour onwards. We'll start at omnipresent outflow. 
And as we read this, although most of it is talking about the oneness or the spontaneous reflex action of oneness as we give, don't think of it just as giving money, for instance. Think of it as all of your outgoing consciousness. Everything you think, everything you do, every belief, concept, idea, every activity, everything, everything that is happening as the presence of your being happens spontaneously as that very degree of consciousness you're living, so that degree of concept you're living, or idea you're living, or belief you're living, or activity you're living, absolutely everything that is happening as you're being. Let's read. Because of oneness, omnipresence, the outflow of you can and does appear from anywhere and everywhere in your kingdom, your universe. Unlike the sun and hosepipe metaphors, which pour forth and evidence their substance, activity and form from literally within themselves to the without, oneness pours forth from all over itself, both inner and outer, and gives back, reveals more good, again from all over itself, both inner and outer, all giving and receiving, being one and the same action, ever multiplying, ever revealing more of the infinity of oneness being expressed, given. Now, let me comment right here. That infinity or consistency of whatever it is that we are giving, whether it be good or bad, is always that which spontaneously comes back or spontaneously is the tangible experience of life. Let's carry on. Oneness cannot perform in any other way. Think, there would have to be two-ness in order for there to be a giving from within to the without. There would have to be two activities, a cause and an effect, the giving, triggering, the receiving. This cannot be and is not true or possible in oneness, omnipresence. All is one. All is one expression witnessed. Oneness, omnipresence, does not have a cause department versus an effect department. Omnipresence is what it claims, all being one. Not only all being one, but all as one. One consciousness, one expression, one form, one object, one place, one condition. As we heard loud and clear in Affluence of Infinity, Bring all the multitudes of your conceptual world into oneness. Bring all your world and its infinity of names and conditions back here into the home of consciousness, into oneness. Dissolve the endless variety of people, things, activities, amounts, avenues, methods, processes, conditions, and the whole of time and space in which it all seems to operate and be subject to, into one, that one being God, truth, spirit, pure consciousness, omnipresence, here, now. Now tell me, where in the oneness of truth is there a cause that triggers an effect? Where would there be a giving inner that triggers a giving back outer? Of course there is not. All is one activity of oneness, revealing ever more abundant measure of that very thing which is being recognized, expressed, poured forth, given as the glory of itself for the fulfillment of the whole of itself, conceptually experienced as human and world fulfillment. As you give what is truthfully happening and literally and tangibly visible to you, if you recognize it, is the whole oneness of you giving of itself. Your whole consciousness, your whole world, and every person, thing, character, amount, activity, place and purpose in it and of it, is giving, pouring forth its beauty, bounty, form, activity, all as love, 
as your blessing, as your fulfilled experience for your good and divine purpose so that your giving good becomes the revealed good of the world. Therefore, do you see that the more you give, the more your world gives to you? A little tangent there we could say in that body of water example that the more we apply pressure to any point of that body of water the more the whole of that body of water can be measured as the greater pressure of that pressure point we're applying to one side of it or any side of it. The more we apply pressure the greater pressure is evident throughout the body of water. This is omnipresence. Therefore, do you see that the more you give, the more your world gives to you? Do you see that the more you give, the more you can continue to give of the more you have? Again, listen to Jesus. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now, how afraid are you to give ceaselessly? How hesitant are you to make giving your way of life? Do you see that giving in this realization and activity of oneness always and infallibly gives back more than seems to be given because from the minute you realize you are giving infinity, you discover that infinity can't help but give back, reveal, more of itself. Infinity cannot help multiply the loaves and fishes as the boundless good and fulfilling forms of every place and situation as you are being the giving expression, or we can say the giving being, the giving consciousness. Giving truthfully as oneness is not a one-for-one deal. It's a one for two or three or five or ten or one hundred fact of truth. He that heareth the word and understandeth it also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. That's Matthew thirteen twenty three. The act of giving as all-inclusive oneness is the bearing fruit and bringing it forth, the revealing of the miracle of life everywhere present as wholesome, boundless, perfect, free and purposeful. You are never giving an amount or a type or a category of anything, even though materially it appears so. You are now always giving, therefore receiving, witnessing, the ever greater multiplication and tangibility of infinity as all form. In your living awareness of all-inclusive oneness, inner and outer being the same one place, one environment, one being, you, when you give that giving evidence is the revealing, the giving back of the world to you, or your experience we can say, or as your experience. Your environment opens itself out ever more beautifully and bountifully as your consciousness. Remember, giving is the act of revealing more of the infinity of substance and form which you are and have within as the whole oneness of you, the complete infinity of your all-inclusive oneness. This looks like, from material sense, an inner being versus an outer world, an inner being giving to an outer being and world. But the appearance is false. The truth is that oneness reveals more and more of the infinity of its good as it expresses, pours itself out, gives as omnipresent fulfillment. The entire infinity of good exists fully manifest and unconditional at and as every place of your universe, your consciousness, every grain of everything, everywhere, in and as your infinity of being, being meaning the entirety of inner and outer experience of life, all being one, not separate or different, but all being one, omnipresent. 
It is everywhere, plump, laden with fruit, simply awaiting recognition and silence and receptivity of mind in which its boundless good is revealed. That boundless good appears to your and my conceptual mind, conceptual consciousness, as the very good mind, body, form, activity, amount and condition of utter fulfilment of that and every moment of awareness, that very place or condition, the instantaneous good and fulfilment of that and every seeming need or desire or demand. It is all about revealing that which is, which occurs by expressing that which is as the very way of life, conceptually pouring out as human giving, serving and sharing. This is what Jesus explains in his instruction, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men, the seeming outer, give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. It is what Malachi explains in his breathtaking third chapter. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Yes, I will pour you out a blessing. I am you, oneness, the pouring out and the revealed blessing coming back so abundantly that there shall not be room to receive it all being one activity of revealing the infinity of being as all. Do you see? Giving is receiving. Giving does not trigger receiving. All is one and the same act, the same presence, the same infinite form, revealing ever more of itself as it is expressed. The moment you realize this beautiful truth, giving becomes an addiction. Giving becomes the only truthful, legitimate and unbounded way of being with greater, more beautiful, more bountiful, more mystical and miraculous abundance of truth tangibly evident as every act of giving and every form evident. As we give, as the consciousness of all-inclusive oneness, our giving is known and evidenced as the revealing of the infinity of truth in and as what we name the tangible outer, the material miracles revealed as tangibly present, as and by the act of giving. The miracle of life is not an effect of a cause, it is the expression, givingness, of truthful being. My friends, take heed. Understand the miracle of oneness, the miracle of you, truth, and be it. Be the fullness of your truth, freely and ceaselessly pouring forth the infinity of yourself in all ways and all forms, no matter whether the mind refers to these as intangible or tangible. Then witness the miracles evidenced all over your kingdom. Witness the miracle you are for and as the good and union of all the principle of truth evidenced as you're pouring forth, as you're revealing the wholeness of truthful being. This is why Jesus told us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the all-inclusive oneness of truth, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. That's John fourteen twelve. It is giving as all-inclusive oneness that reveals the miracle, the works of truth. Understand this, be truth, and give to all ceaselessly and unconditionally. Never go anywhere without giving something. Never visit any personal place without giving something to that personal place. Do not take from person, place or condition. Always give to him, her and it. Feed him, her or it. Supply him, her or it. 
nourish and enrich him, her or it, somehow, with something, flowers, a note or a card of love and appreciation, sweets or chocolates, food, fruit, cinema or theatre tickets, a book or CD, dollars, a painting or picture, a shirt or blouse or scarf, something, anything. Inclusively, and most important of all, give your silence and receptivity, your nothingness of human being, therefore the allness of truthful being. Thereby what you can give is boundless as you realize all as infinity, all as spirit, simply appearing through the five senses as matter. The more is given, the more of infinity is revealed. The point is that in continually giving of your infinity of being, you continually reveal more of that infinity. I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. The I that comes, awakens and is felt happening within, has no other purpose than to give ceaselessly of itself, of God, I, of the infinity of spirit and truth that it is. In doing so, the very act of doing so, the miraculous works of truth are revealed right at the place or as the condition where untruth seemed to exist. There is no limit to what you witness as you know yourself and all as 100% spiritual being living in and as the spiritual universe of self, the kingdom of God with none else existing, the all-inclusive oneness of God being all. Our work and beyond. Take good time reading, then pondering deeply each aspect of this last message. Each is a heavenly treasure, yours to freely take ownership of, then witness as the miracle of truthful life, your life, your fulfillment of purpose and joy for the good of all. Start giving, pouring forth the infinity you are and have in all ways, all forms. Never again take from life. Taking from life is literally taking from yourself, thrusting your experience into lack and limitation, discord and struggle. Taking is dark. Giving is light. Give yourself the gift of giving, the gift of light, illumined consciousness. It is the greatest gift in the universe, the greatest treasure in heaven, the greatest purpose of being. As you give ceaselessly, unselfishly and unconditionally, your true light shines ever more brightly and powerfully and the world reveals its truth. It reacts and responds, the world being the oneness of I, you, conceptually experienced as your human self. Every person, thing, amount and condition, being the image and likeness of God itself, reacts and responds to you as your spiritual oneness and completeness by giving back to you in experience, fulfilling your purpose of being, in order that you may give more abundantly, in order that your life may be fulfilled as the saviour and truth of the world. I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. In this way, this way only, can we look into the eyes of Jesus and answer yes when he asks, do you love me? You remember his answer to Simon when the disciples said, yes, master, you know that I love you. Then feed my sheep. Three times Jesus had to ask Simon the same question because the disciple intellectually understood truth but hadn't yet awakened to life's one true purpose and fulfillment, giving of oneself in all ways at all times. Truthful being is giving, period. There is no other truthful reason for being. Without giving to, loving, feeding, supplying your kingdom, this world, we cannot truthfully say we love God 
spirit, truth. We cannot truthfully claim to be seeking God. We cannot truthfully claim to be seeking spiritual awakening. Only in the tangible act of being love, which means giving the gifts of love, for love ceaselessly gives of itself, can we say, I love you. I truly am seeking by tangibly being truth to the best of my daily ability. Indeed, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Yes, because the you that is giving and the you that is being given unto is the very same you experiencing the very same act, infinitely and forever opening, revealing its omnipresence in greater, richer, more bountiful and beautiful degrees, giving of itself, revealing of itself, in multiplied ways, because you are that whole oneness of infinity expressing, giving, being. You are the infinity of omnipresence, ever revealing, blossoming and experiencing more of itself right here as the very place, the very being that is you as all. Yes, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. This is the key to heaven, the universe, the world, you. This is the sacred key which unlocks the deepest truth secrets, unveiling and revealing its greatest treasures and highest purpose, giving of its wholeness, God's glory, God's fullness, God's you, God's all. Now, with the understanding that your entirety of being, your entirety of consciousness is omnipresence, meaning that every act, every thought, every belief, concept, idea, everything of you, both what we could describe as good and honourable and truthful and free and happy, and loving, and generous, and what we could describe of you and me as not so good, bad, in fear, hesitating, withholding, unloving, the consciousness of separation from God, all the acts or acts of being or ingredients of being that in the old scriptural term we read as sin. Anything at all that is the very being that we are being, is spontaneously revealed as our experience. Now, the trouble that the intellect has is that because the mind is very slow of awareness, what we are being this moment is mostly not evidenced until some point later in time, in the sense of time. So we may be, for instance, holding on to the belief that we easily catch a cold. If we walk through a cold virus or a flu virus, we believe that we can easily catch that cold or catch that flu. Now, we might be living with this today, and yet we catch a cold or we catch a flu in December. But now it's only September 3rd. And so it takes, in the sense of time, three months between September 3rd and December 3rd for us to evidence a cold or a flu happening as our experience. But let me tell you when it really happened. It happened as and at the very moment you expressed your belief, or I did, of being able to catch a flu or catch a cold. Because omnipresence is spontaneous. There's no delay. When we apply pressure to the side of that cube of water, spontaneously it is measurable as pressure at any point of the water we care to take a measuring device 
and detects that pressure. And not only that, it is measured as actually taking place, the cause of it taking place at any place we wish to take a measuring device and witness that pressure happening. And so, this is the truth of omnipresence, the truth of being. What you think, what you believe, what you say, what you do, everything, the entire infinite ingredients of what you are at this level of consciousness today is infallibly evidenced as your experience in one way or another. And you can't get out of it. This is, the, again, the karmic trap or the karmic experience, the eternal karmic experience of untruthful life by a degree which we cannot escape from until that moment we escape from ourselves. We lift our consciousness into spiritual awareness and start giving spirit, giving the incorporeal, being the incorporeal, spiritual, omnipresent, eternal consciousness of being. So, Let us realize here and now, because we're focusing on body, although we've lifted into the realization that the whole of consciousness is body. But again, let's just take this physical seeming aspect of body that we have believed. And for this example, let's assume that there is some kind of illness or disease or pain or suffering or immobility or injury of the body that we are dealing with as experience at this moment. Let us be absolutely sure that we realize because actually consciousness is body, consciousness and everything in and of it is actually the one you that you are, all one as well, all omnipresence. Every time we hold a negative or a bad concept or belief about experience, in other words, every time we again entertain a separateness from God. We're entertaining that some aspect or body or place or amount or being of experience is something separate from that which it really is, separate from God and is something in and of its own self with its own power, its own activity, its own quality or condition. Then it is that that exact Belief we are entertaining and therefore expressing entertainment of something is the expression of it. We can't hide ourselves. What's happening in the deepest part of you is witnessed all over your world as the embodiment of that very thing which you expressed, which you entertained. That very belief, that very concept, that very idea. Not everywhere but it comes up and it infallibly comes up somewhere. So if we are entertaining a separation from God, if we are entertaining a negative, if we are entertaining something other than God, if we are criticizing, if we are being judgmental, if we're angry, if we're impatient, if we have a lack of time, if we're stressed, if we're hurried, if we're burdened, then eventually only because the mind is very slow. And I often think it would help enormously if the mind was spontaneous. And, and we'll get into this later, as we lift in truthful consciousness, the mind awareness or the faculty or the speed of mind awareness does in fact become very, very much faster. But we'll speak about that later. But right now, wouldn't it be wonderful if mind awareness was so fast that we quickly saw the consequences, good or bad, of what we are being this minute. That would be helpful. But I want all of us to be absolutely certain that we do, we infallibly do witness the consequences, the evidence of whatever it is we're being sooner or later. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's not as quick, but infallibly you will and I do witness the consequences the expression of being, which we are being, this very minute and this very hour, sooner or later. Now, are these expressions, if they're anything but truthful, 
an actual bad or negative or destructive or harmful entity. No, they are false idea, false concept. And so even though it's hard for us to hear that even if we have a very deep and private thought that somebody is a so-and-so and we wish we were rid of them, or we wish they would move, or we wish they would jump in the lake, or that we wish somebody wouldn't be so critical, wish somebody wouldn't be so short-tempered, wish somebody would give us more attention, wish somebody would be more friendly and loving and happy, or if we believe some experience of the sense of physical body, that it is aging, that it is tired, that it is stiff, that it is painful, that it is suffering in some way, that it is ill or diseased or injured in some way, if we believe that experience as being something of its own self, we understand now that as we believe these things, these false ideas and concepts, these untruths, what is happening is that we are cementing them further into our experience. Even though this is hard to hear, it's also wonderful to hear because it's the doorway to our freedom here and now. And that doorway is this. No matter what it is that we've done in the past in terms of untruthful awareness, and please, let's again remind ourselves that the great majority, if not all, of our untruthful awareness, our sinning, again to put it in the old scriptural terms, is unwitting. Let's be kind to ourselves because truly we need to be. All of our untruthful being and knowing is unwitting. Of course it is. If we really knew the truth, then we would quickly lift into truth. And that's what we're doing now. So let's not feel guilty and let's not feel burdened and let's not feel trapped by all of our so-called sinning of the past and even right up to the moments before this class. Let's not. Because the way out, the way to freedom here and now is to realize our unwitting mistake. That is to believe untruth in all the ways that we believe untruth and to live and to act and to be untruthful in all the ways that we do. And to realize then that all of it is nothing to do with God. None of it is known by God. It's all inescapable experience because we can't get out of ourselves ever. But none of it is known by God. None of it's being written up in heaven as a bad thing, which one day we'll have to atone for. We're atoning for it right here and now. The judgment day is the judgment minute. This very minute I am judged, meaning I am experiencing whatever it is I am being as consciousness, as being. Here's my judgment day. And the greatest thing about Judgment Day is that we are released. We're given our freedom through the grace of truth, the awareness of truth. The third thing to realize is that none of anything but truth is an entity. It is all nothing of its own self. It has no power, no presence, no law or principle behind it, no embodiment of truth as it it is absolutely nothing. It is only a puff of smoke, a, an empty image in mind. And because mind isn't God, in other words, thought or concept or idea or belief isn't God, nothing to do with God, it is nothing because God is the only and the all. And then fourthly, we now know what to do with this. We leave it of its own self alone in our new awareness that I am consciousness and the truth of consciousness is fully embodied good here and now. Fully embodied perfection, harmony, joy, omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, eternity here and now. And so as I lift now into the living awareness of the incorporeal, being God, being the only presence, the only being, the only body, the only experience I can possibly have. And as I start living the incorporeal awareness, 
I start recognizing and giving my awareness of incorporeality, of omnipresence, of God, being the everything, everywhere, without exception, then it is that here and now I have lifted myself into truthful body. And as we heard the other day and throughout, it is my awareness, it is awareness itself that we can say is healed. Not the embodiment, not the forms that we witness, whether it be our sense of physical body or physical world or anything or anyone throughout the entirety of it, but it is my awareness and yours which so-called heals, is illumined, is, il- is lifted up into and now living truth that witnesses the so-called healing of experience, healing of all the bodies, all the forms, all the places, the conditions, the amounts, the activities of our body, of our experience. And so we continually feed the multitudes of experience with the truth, the very substance of truth, which is our act of consciousness, our act of living awareness that all, despite the way it appears, is the incorporeal presence of truth, of God, of spirit, of omnipresence itself, eternity itself, fully present, fully embodied as whatever my mind is doing with it, as the multitudes of forms, of beings, of activities, of amounts, places, conditions, of the experience of consciousness that I'm witnessing through and as the five senses and the three dimensions of mind. We continually feed the multitudes. Now, this is the highest meaning of the feeding of the multitudes. Go back and read those beautiful accounts and understand what Jesus was actually doing. And believe me, Jesus was not doing it suddenly as the disciples came and pointed out that there were thousands of hungry people in front of him. No, Jesus is continually the feeding consciousness. Jesus is continually feeding all the multitudes of experience at every step. Listen to him. I am the bread of life. Feed my sheep. I am the life. I am the water, the bread, the wine. Again, feed my sheep. Feed the multitudes. Not just when they seem to need feeding. That's not going to help very much because now, presented with thousands that need feeding, and we all have that, might not be thousands of so-called human beings, but it's thousands of beings, thousands of forms of our experience, no matter what we call them. They're all beings and they all need continual feeding. Otherwise, again, as we've heard over and over, what we're witnessing is dead matter simply running on some leftover momentum. Why seek the living amongst the dead? Look for the living amongst the living. Well, the only life there is, is the incorporeal substance of consciousness feeding experience, feeding all the elements or aspects of consciousness that we call the five senses and the three dimensions, the entirety of the infinite variety of form and being and activity amount of our experience. And so we feed our world, we feed the multitudes as we recognize the presence of God as everything, everywhere, everyone, everywhere, every amount, everywhere. As we recognize everything, everywhere as the incorporeal presence, never the corporeal, spirit rather than matter, spirit, not form. We recognize all form as the very infinity of omnipresence right there as that very form. Therefore, by the virtue of any form's non-existence as something in and of its own self, that form is always infinite and always omnipresent infinity as that very form. Now, this is what we must be the living consciousness of, and in that way, we are continually feeding the multitudes. We're feeding them with spiritual nourishment. We're not trying to ever feed them 
from truth to untruth. We're not trying to feed spirit into matter or feed the infinite into the finite, feed the incorporeal into the corporeal and witness that finite matter or corporeal form or being suddenly lift up and be holy and happy in truth. No, that's impossible because that being or that form, that place or that amount or condition already is the whole of the incorporeal and that recognition is what feeds our experience and reveals it as the truthful form or truthful being or body or amount or place or condition. Jesus looked up when he was presented by the disciples with the hungry crowds and seemingly far too little food, completely inadequate amounts of food for the thousands. He looked up. What does that mean? He remembered, he reminded himself that all is the incorporeal omnipresence of truth, fully self-complete fully whole at every point of itself. Therefore, in truth, there never can be hunger. There never can be a hungry person and too little food and then a God somewhere that'll fix the problem. No. He looked up into the incorporeal, looked up to God, raised his consciousness into an as God consciousness, Christ consciousness, illumined consciousness. And there he witnessed the full presence of God, And then he blessed the loaves and fishes. He blessed the situation. He blessed the seeming problem. Blessed meaning he recognized the truth despite the appearance. And his consciousness was so high, so lifted, so filled, full and overflowing with and as the truth that what was then witnessed was, to material sense, a miracle. The multiplication of food feeding the thousands, where a minute ago or an hour ago, there was a complete insufficiency of food for the thousands. Now, in this way, we must continually lift up our consciousness and bless our experience. Lift up and bless. Lift up and bless. Lift up and bless. This is the way we walk every step. This is the way we are at every moment. 24 hours a day, we're continually lifting up and blessing. Raising our consciousness into truth. Maintaining truthful consciousness. And then recognizing that truth. This is the feeding. We're feeding our multitudes by our recognition that they, despite experience or appearance, are actually the one truth. Therefore, fully complete, self-complete, omnipresent, infinite, eternal, the very presence of God itself, truth itself. Now, as we do this and take no thought for any particular thing, remember, we're not now interested in any local appearance or local problem or local solution. We're not interested in either of the pairs of opposites. That's not our work. That's not truthful being. We're interested in lifting up to and then maintaining truthful consciousness And then, blessing, feeding the multitudes with that truth, with the recognition of that truth. As we do this, then, without ever taking thought for the seeming problem, we will gradually, and by the degree that we remain lifted and unattached from that which seems to be the problem, witness that problem, so-called healing. And I don't care what it is that needs healing, whether it's something of the body, illness, disease, injury, whether it's something of experience to do with supply or love or relationship or companionship or work activity or opportunity or safety, security or home. It doesn't matter what it is. These are all just the concepts of the mind, the idea, the lowly ideas of the mind, which, because consciousness is always embodied, 
is always experience, are what we describe then as the physical body or our physical relationship or our family, our home, our money, our work, our place, our safety, security, whatever it may be. Forget it all. It matters not because it's not of God. It's of idea, of concept. So forget it all. Take no thought for the things of life, but seek the kingdom of God. And then all these things shall be added unto you, all these experiences of good, the truth now witnessed as the image and likeness of good, of truth, of God, shall be given to your experience, shall blossom and reveal themselves as your consciousness, your your truthful experience. So take no thought, be not concerned, fear not, detach yourself from the seeming problem and its seeming solution, and stay in God consciousness and be concerned with only one thing remaining in God consciousness and feeding the multitudes of experience. That's all you need to be concerned with. And once you've labored in the field all day long doing that, which means once you've labored in the field for 50, 55 minutes of every hour, whatever it is you're doing, you might be working, you might be with your family, you might be with your love, you might be engaging in some other way. But all the time you are remaining as best you can in truthful consciousness and feeding the multitudes. Then finally, for the last five minutes, rest and let the harvest grow. Let the fruit grow. In other words, let the truth be revealed now as you are completely still and silent and open and receptive where you hand the whole of you, the whole of consciousness, the whole of experience over to God, which it actually is, and let God be God as you. Let God be 100% God as 100% you. And feel the truth happening. Feel the presence of you happening as peace, as joy, as love, as freedom, as release, as bliss. That's now when and how the actual new bread, the fresh manna, the new life, the truthful life, is being released into and as forms of experience. There it is, the new actual substance of truth, fulfilling, revealing, blossoming, coming forth as the rich fruitage and the treasures of the image and likeness of God as experience. All right, let's stop here for the moment. There's a good amount to chew on. And most important of all, let us all hear this message and begin immediately to live the adventure of truth. Here it is. This is the way. And so let us first be ever more the consciousness of truth feeding the multitudes of our experience. I am the life, therefore I must be that life feeding experience with life. If I don't do it, there is no life with which experience is receiving food. I am the love. If I don't feed experience as love, there is no love or very little love that experience is being fed with. I am the bread, the wine, the water, the truth, the happiness, the joy, the oneness. And if I am not feeding the multitudes of my experience 
as that consciousness, then there is nothing feeding my experience or very little feeding my experience. There's always grace present. There's always some life, some momentum left. But if I do not live truth, if I do not feed the multitudes of experience with and as truth, then I'm not feeding my life, my body, therefore, with and as truth. And I have to suffer that consequence. But equally, the moment I do begin to ever more, every hour, feed the mind, know the truth and then feed the multitudes of experience with and as that truth, I ever more witness that joy, that freedom, that truth, that happiness, that love, that life, that abundance, that freedom of truthful truth here and now as the very image and likeness of God as my very experience every day. Thank you, thank you. See you on class 18. Good night.